Okay, welcome to our next session. Today we're going to be talking about the kidney, uh, and specifically we're going to be talking about renal clearance. So you've heard the term renal clearance, uh, and it's something you need to just have in the back of your head and uh, not even think about it, and just know it. So, renal clearance, there's several ways to think about it. The best definition is that renal clearance is the hypothetical plasma volume containing the amount of any substance excreted in the urine per minute. Okay, so the way that's going to work is you're going to find out the amount of something that's excreted per minute in the urine, and then you're going to go back and figure out how much plasma contained that. Okay, so the other way to think about it is the renal clearance is the amount of plasma that is cleared of any substance per minute. Okay, and that'll make sense once we do some problems. Now, along with the concept of renal clearance, we're going to get down and we're going to talk about free water clearance. Okay, same thing, don't get confused by it. Free water clearance is the amount of plasma that's cleared of water per minute. Okay, and it's the same thing. So when you talk about renal clearance, if I talk about renal clearance of, say, creatinine, I'm going to get very high numbers. Because remember, creatinine is uh, filtered and uh, inert to the rest of the tubule, uh, so it gives us a good idea of GFR. Now in real life, creatinine is actually secreted a little bit, uh, but we're going to ignore that for now. Okay, and because it's secreted a little bit, when you use creatinine to estimate the GFR, you overestimate it a little bit, but we can get into that later. So, when you use creatinine, okay, remember it's filtered, okay, uh, but then it's not reabsorbed and it's not secreted, uh, so whatever you're excreting is the same amount that's coming in uh, through the glomerulus and being filtered. So that gives you an estimation of glomerular, glomerular filtration rate. Okay, so that's going to give you a high number. It's going to be 100 mils, 120 mils, something like that. So that's 100 to 120 mils of plasma that are cleared of creatinine per minute. Now conversely, when you look at free water clearance, uh, of course, plasma is mostly water, so these numbers are going to be very low. Okay, so you might have a free water clearance of uh, plus two, and that means every minute, two mils of plasma are cleared of water. Okay, so that means you're losing water. It's a positive number. Okay, now let's do the math and work through all of that. So, uh, we said renal clearance is the hypothetical plasma volume containing the amount of any substance excreted in the urine per minute. Uh, so this is going to be a mils per minute value. Or we said it's the amount of plasma uh, that is cleared of any substance. So how would we work that out? How would we do this? Well, uh, you really just need three things. Okay, Like I said, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to calculate the amount that's excreted in the urine. So what do you need to do that? You need a urine concentration and you need a urine flow rate. So that's what I have here. U is the urine concentration, milligrams per mil, and then I have a urine flow rate, mils per minute. Okay, when I combine these, I can calculate the amount per minute that's excreted. Okay, I have an excretion rate in the urine. Okay, you just multiply them by each other. So you have milligrams per mil, urine concentration, you multiply it by mils per minute, this is the, uh, the urine flow rate, and you get milligrams per minute, or the amount of anything that's being excreted per minute. Now, the third thing you need is you need a plasma concentration. So in real life, you would take a blood sample, and you would look at the concentration in the plasma. Uh, so this is going to be milligrams per mil. Now, you've ended by determining milligrams per minute excreted. Okay, so let's bring that term down to number two here. Number one is you calculate the amount of something excreted per minute. Number two is you take that milligrams per minute, and now you're going to multiply it by your plasma value. Now, you're just going to use units analysis to get things to cancel out to mils per minute. So you have milligrams per minute, so now you're going to multiply it by the mils of plasma with, a, with whatever the milligrams are on the denominator. Okay, does that make sense? So the plasma concentration is going to be given in milligrams per mil, and you need to just invert it to mils per milligram. Okay. Uh, same number, but you got to invert it to keep your units correct and to end up with milligrams canceling out and getting mils per minute. Now, uh, when you do that, you get your clearance. You've calculated the amount excreted per minute, and then you've determined the amount of plasma that would contain that amount. Okay? So, 
All you need is urine concentration, urine flow rate, and plasma concentration. Another way to write that, which is the formula you're going to see and you should have locked in your head, is that, is that clearance is equal to urine concentration times urine flow rate uh, divided by plasma concentration. Okay, so urine's on top, urine's on top, urine's on top. Now, when you get over and you start doing free water clearance, different story, same formula. So free water clearance is, again, urine on top, urine on top, urine on top. Urine osmolality minus urine flow divided by plasma osmolality, okay? So it's a little bit different. And like I said, when you're doing uh, these things, you're gonna get different numbers, okay? When you're talking about free water clearance, uh, remember, these numbers are going to be very different, okay? So you might get a creatinine clearance of 120, meaning 120 mils of plasma are being cleared of creatinine in a minute. Uh, you might have a free water clearance of 2, meaning uh, 2 mils of plasma are being cleared of water in a minute, okay? Now, when you're talking about free water clearance, uh, you should actually already know what I'm about to tell you right now, and that is if it's greater than 0, Okay, it means you're clearing water. That means you're losing H2O. Okay, so if it's greater than zero, you're losing water. And that makes sense. We just said it's the plasma volume uh, containing the amount of some, sub, something that is excreted per minute. Okay, if it's less than zero, then you're retaining water. All right, so if it's less than zero, you're retaining water. And finally, if, if the free water clearance is zero, it just means your uh, urine is isotonic with your plasma. And that should make sense to you. Now, finally, before we end this segment on uh, renal clearance and the concept of, uh, a real quick review of glomerular filtration rate uh, and the equations used for it. So I told you that glomerular filtration rate, okay, or the rate of filtering from the capillary uh, across, uh, across uh, Bowman space into Bowman's capsule, okay, so this is all filtrate and this is urine. I told you that the GFR, the filtration rate, can be estimated by the creatinine clearance. And the reason for that, as you likely know, is that creatinine is filtered, meaning it goes from the plasma here into the urine here, but then it's not reabsorbed, which is taken back into the blood, and it's not secreted, which is going from the blood into the tubule here, okay? And so what, what that means is anything that's filtered then comes out of the other end and goes into the toilet and you can collect it. And so what you collect uh, actually tells you what the filtration rate is if you know the plasma concentration. That should make sense. Now, you can also talk about GFR in terms of uh, this formula here, and this formula relates a basically a coefficient which has to do with the mesangial cells and the podocytes uh, and, and the filtration ability here, which we're going to come back to later. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about uh, in this session, what I wanted to end this session with is talking about pressures, okay? Uh, so there are, are laws that govern uh, filtration at capillaries, and the kidney is no different. Okay, so in the, glomerul in the glomerulus, uh, think of this just like you would filtering at a capillary. And what I mean by that is you have uh, different pressures that are acting on this. For the glomerulus, I want you to consider just the hydrostatic pressure, so the pressure of the fluid, uh, and the oncotic pressure, or the pressure of the solutes in the solution. Now. Uh, you already know that when you filter from the plasma uh, to the tubule, it's mostly fluid. Okay, so there's not a lot of oncotic pressure. There should be a lot of protein getting into the urine uh, if you have a healthy nephron. Okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at pressure that is due to hydrostatic. Okay, from plasma into filtrate, into urine, it is about 60 torr, okay? So there's a positive pressure pushing of about 60 into the filtrate. Now, there's also fluid in here. There's fluid in the tubule, uh, and it's backing up to some degree, not really, but a little bit. There's a little bit of pressure. It's not like there's a vacuum in there. And that pressure pushing back is about 18 torr. Okay, so you have 60 torr in, you have 18 torr pushing it back. That is just due to fluid already being in there. Now, you also have this oncotic pressure uh, in the plasma, and this is because you have plasma proteins, mostly albumin, uh, that are coming through and exerting an oncotic pressure. Now I just told you that it's, it's proteins that are not getting filtered 
uh, through the membrane here. So that means that you really don't have an onchotic pressure, at least not in a healthy kidney or a healthy, healthy nephron uh, on this side. So that gives you a uh, pressure of 32 pulling back into the plasma, okay? And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna say that uh, the GFR is equal to this coefficient times the difference between these pressures. So really you're just summing all the pressures here. Okay, so you have 60 pushing in, you have 18 pushing back, those are both hydrostatic, and then you have an additional 32 pulling back, uh, which are the plasma proteins coming through and kind of osmotically sucking water, and that gives you a result of around 10. So that's another way you can express uh, your glomerular filtration rate. So you should be very comfortable with the concept of renal clearance. I've shown you how you can use renal, I've shown you how you can use renal clearance of creatinine, or artificially you can inject somebody with inulin, let it circulate, uh, and that is actually, that actually is inert to the rest of the tubule, and you can use these things to estimate uh, glomerular filtration rate. However, I'd be remiss not to tell you that you can do renal clearance, as you probably guessed of anything. So you can give me a, uh, a renal clearance of sodium, you can give me a renal clearance of glucose, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So renal clearance and glomerular filtration rate, as well as free water clearance. Okay, see you next time.